Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the death sled. <laughs> this is uh, me and Dusty right here. We're on some BC back roads. We're packing up here for ending our hunt. So I thought we'd just do kind of a little quick podcast, video podcast for some of my special membership people. Um, yeah, we had a pretty interesting hunt this week. We're riding around in Nick's uh, guide mobile. It's got a big snow owl on the hood of it. But uh, yeah, we did a lot of hunting off bikes. You can see our bikes in the back. That worked really well, but it's been just crazy rain, nasty weather. You're gonna have to deal with the bumpy stuff because it's the roads are terrible. We're up here in logging country. Um, I don't even know where our closest town is, but anyway, there's Dusty. You've seen him before. Don't crash. Focus. All right, so the point of this little video podcast was I thought it'd be cool. Uh, Dusty and I have had a successful hunt. We actually were able to get my bear on the first day, which is pretty awesome. Um, a lot of that kind of comes down to we did a little bit of scouting that first day um, we weren't able there wasn't enough time to really hunt the first day so Dusty myself and Nick uh, just really covered a lot of this ground up here they we kind of found the roads where we did have access in without getting stuck kind of wanted to get the feeling for where we can hunt where we can't hunt most all of this is just public land crown land they call it up here but uh, we were able to find a fresh track on the first night of scouting, and that's all we had was a very fresh track. And uh, Dusty and I slipped down there to that fresh green, literally the first morning, slipped down on our bikes, and we were able to make arguably one of the coolest bear shots I've ever had. But I wanted to maybe just do this little video podcast and maybe just run a few questions by you questions that I think a lot of our first time bear hunters or first time traveling hunters that are going with an outfitter for their first time not necessarily for bear because Dusty guides has guided everything his dad's guided everything um, so what's some of the what's some of the most common mistakes hunters make when they come up hunting with you Sorry, we're gonna be choppy. <laughs> What's some of the first biggest mistakes people make on first time hunts? Uh, not having the right gear. Do your research. Know what you have to bring. That's one of the biggest problems. Check the weather, having the right clothes, that kind of stuff. That's one of the first things I've noticed. What are some of the things that you've seen that people have brought wrong? Mm, too light of clothes or too heavy of clothes? because you don't want either. If it turns out to be cold, the weather's so unpredictable this time of year that you really want to look into it and have a, a little bit of both because if it turns out to be really warm and all you brought was your warm clothes, that's, that's not fun. And same with if it's too cold and you got your light stuff. So be prepared for anything. Yep. Layering is the key. You've heard a lot about layering in recent years, I'm sure. And, you know, I can tell you the way that I pack... Um, and I was gonna do a little video on how I actually pack, but you know, there's a difference between base layers, outer layers, wind layers, um, or rain layers. They're all different. So it's nice to not have one suit that does everything because then you're stuck in one big suit that is rainproof and that normally that will come with a little more noise or something like that so pretty much the way that i'm dressed you can see i have a true base layer right here um, you can see this is actually a base i really like this this is a, a base layer that ua makes it's light but it also wicks and that's important because if you get sweaty you want to be able to have your moisture come off of you and be able to escape 
So I have a base layer and my base layer is really depending on what type of temperature I'm expecting for the day. Um, Under Armour is nice because they make their base layers in numbers. So they've got a one, two, three, and four. So, you know, it's, it's supposed to be in the 60s this week. So I went with a lighter base layer. Um, I've got a, I've got my hex on as, you know, my electronic magnetic shield barrier, which actually worked awesome. And then I've got this hoodie on. I wear hoodies a lot um, just because I like to be able to pull the hood up to kind of shade my face. Plus uh, the, these Under Armour hoods, they're actually made out of a storm material. So, you know, if you put water on there, the water sheds off. But in my pack, back there somewhere, um, I've got um, a jacket where the, the hood and the arms zip off. So I'm able to literally remove arms if I just need a vest a little bit or at night, especially when we're packing out at night, I've gotta, I've gotta get warm because it gets cold fast. So I put the whole jacket on with the arms. Um, Dusty always has packable rain gear in his backpack. Uh, because you know you get out it can be a nice day and all of a sudden you shoot get a shot at something and you're going to be there for the next several hours skinning and quartering and exiting the fields um, you need to have that rain gear and honestly having a nice rain gear that's a shell i like that yeah. a lot um, and we've actually even used that in the past for a lot of different things there's been times where we've had to like um, we've had to carry stuff and we'll use that, uh, our rain suits to actually wrap stuff up and tie the arms off to carry out things. And because it's rain gear, you can power wash it off really nice. I think we've, I think with my moose one time we had to use it kind of to bring some of the meat out, both of us. Yeah, the back um, I think yeah we, we, you know, you can take the legs of your rain, packable rain suit, flip it inside out so that you have the exterior part and uh, we actually had to slide my back straps in each of the legs we tied them off slid them in the legs and then we're able to just throw them over your shoulder and pack them out like a life jacket um, and that was because we didn't have meat sacks we were improvising but you can do it um, another thing people do that I've seen a lot Dusty you can maybe expand on this is not being ready for a shot yeah that's a big thing um, listen to your guide. We'll know for the most part when the shot's gonna happen and just be ready. If I tell you to be ready, that means fully ready, arrow knocked, ready to go whenever I tell you that the shot's there. So you see a lot of that guys will get up close, they'll fumble, they try to do their range again and just they get themselves so worked up I think it is that they, they end up screwing up the shot. So. Yeah, and not being ready like in the vehicle. Yeah, you that's know, another big one. Your release aid, this is huge. Sorry, Dusty, I'm just taking over. That's good, I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> I learned some important rules for BC. Teamwork, safety. That's two rules that we have to follow up here in oil patch land. Yeah. Safety first, then teamwork. Then teamwork safety first then teamwork so one thing i've noticed because i've done a lot of two-on-one hunts with dusty um or we've had other hunters with us and you know a lot of times even though right now we're just cruising around and we're trying to get from one spot where we've seen bears 40 50 miles to another spot where we've seen bears that doesn't mean you shouldn't be ready to all of a sudden see a bear feeding on the side of these logging roads. I've had a lot of times where you come around the corner, there's a moose literally standing off the edge of one of these logging roads and someone's got the release, you know, wrapped around their bow limb or something like that. Quivers you should all, yeah, quivers in the backpack. That That's another good one. This, this is critical. If you're hunting, you need to be ready to need to be ready to make a shot. Um, that's why I've always got my release pouch on my side. I can literally, it's like reaching in my pocket and I'm pulling my release out and I'm able to, to be able to 
be hunting and also you know my bow is this is pretty important too. see how my bow is in this vehicle um, make sure you know your laws if you have to have a case or not but my top limb is down my top limb is down so that my string is protected by the plastic of the dashboard if you have the string the other way it ends up wrecking your string the arrows are up and the arrows are away from my face you know so I don't you don't want to fall on these they're right between us but uh, I'm able to literally pull my bow out you know by the top cam pull it out flip it up and you can go on you're already on a stock your arrows are right on your your bow everything's totally set to go I've seen that a lot of times sounds sounds foolish to people who have experience but I'm just here to tell you I've seen it all when it comes to hunting um, other thing too is you know when it comes to a lot of these true hunts where you're in a camp you're up here backpacking uh, you know we we don't have showers every single day you know you're 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 not sitting in one spot every day like we do for whitetails you know up in our country where we go out for whitetails or maybe where we go on our elk spot we return back to home scent control is is doable um, but the reality is scent control is almost impossible to totally perfect I had a lot of luck with my ozonics in my blinds and in controlled situations but when you're up here and you need to just face the truth of you know we're running chainsaws to cut limbs out of the road you know we're having to eat our lunch out of our backpacks we've you know we've already took a bear out on our backpacks we've had to pack meat cut meat you know you're contaminated scent wise i've seen so many people that burn a lot of their space and their luggage bringing all kinds of scent control oh, oh yeah cubs. sound cubs nice see this is how it happens Let's see if i can f well i don't know if i'll be able to just see it here quick oh yeah they're right up there go up the right behind that thick stuff there There he is, standing up. Go forward, go forward. Just standing up, right through there. Go forward a little more. Right there. See your ears in there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Sound cub, see? If your release is on your bow, and that was a boar, then you're done. That's it. You missed your chance. <laughs> so, uh, scent control. Save your, save your effort with scent control. You don't need to worry about, you know, totally being scent free the reality is these bears can smell so dang good and you're just you're not going to be able to stay scent free i know that you know the people have to we're snacking in the car you're i mean your bow is leaning against that throttle right there that you know has had chainsaw gas on it probably 20 times i know some people that get so scent control oriented they freak out about that but you know that's the truth of hunting up here in the backcountry, covering a lot of ground. Um, the other thing too is really trusting your guide. There's a lot of times where I've been up here, and I, you know, even I don't want to make out like I've got the most experience of all, but I do have some experience, and I've had times where I have an idea of this is what we need to do, this is what we need to do, and Dusty's dad has literally had to put his foot down stop me in my tracks and say no we're gonna go around this way because there's a secret little cattle path up the back side of that field the winds blowing down to the river you got the river for noise cover like we don't need to go this way this is the way we need to go so trusting your guide for little things like that are gonna make a huge difference with you being successful and what else, Dusty? Can you think of anything else hunters have done that have cost them their animal because of something small? Um, noise, but the, the biggest part with these things is, like you said, the wind. If you don't have the wind, big crossing right there. Something yeah. big just crossed right there. If you don't have the wind, there's no point in going. It's like John said, these things' noses are unreal. So if, if the wind's not right, don't even bother. Slip out of there and hope that the wind changes or you can come around a different way. It's when you get too excited and you rush in and you quit paying attention to that wind, that's when you're going to lose that animal. Yeah, and a lot of times too, 
Um, look at all the dandelions that have popped here. It's amazing. A lot of times too, you've got uh, you've got a lot of people that come out here and they really want to walk around, walk around a lot. This is kind of an important tip. If you're walking around all the time in the areas where you know that you've got game, whether it's moose, whether it's elk, whatever, deer, you know, you're better off at least out here keeping some distance and glassing and knowing that your opportunity is there before you go on that move because otherwise every single time you walk out into a field and you walk the edge, you're putting down scent. You are putting down, you know, your foot tracks, your guide's foot tracks. If you have a candy bar and you sit on the ground and have your lunch, whatever, you're putting out scent. And those spots that are good and where you know the animals are, the best thing you can do is let them stay in their natural pattern. Don't disturb that pattern. And you're gonna have a lot more success. When it comes to your first guided hunt, I can just tell you, if you haven't been on a hunt before, do a little bit of research. Uh, one thing that's critical, and this is something that's really helped people um, throughout the years when I've heard, hunted with Dusty and Bert, um, they've always used me as a reference. And people had the ability, if, if they were, if they had, you know, were serious about booking a hunt with Bert or Dusty, if they were adamant about we really want a reputable reference, then they would give them my email and people could email and say, hey, is this a reputable outfitter? And I would be able to personally then say, yeah, I've been there 15, 20 years. I've hunted with these guys in a lot of different spots. We've been successful. Here's some of my pictures um, here. you know." And then a lot of times even being able to say, here's the the guides that I've personally had and that I've recommended muleys all out there. Some big mule deer. Really cool being able to just drive around and see this country. Um, we've done about, let's see, where were we where we just hunted? Was that 45, 50 kilometers from here? Yeah. yeah. So we've done 50 kilometers just to get down to uh, check out some of these other spots where we scouted. So you do cover a lot of ground once you get there you get out and kind of bomb around but um, yeah you can ask what guides might suit your personality better um, you know not everyone is going to get along with the same person all the time and what I can tell you this is probably really good advice too if you go to an outfitter you know it's one thing if for some reason you just feel like you're a know-it-all and you're not trusting your guide because you think you know everything kind of sometimes you got to put that to the side there's a difference if you've got a guy that just isn't any good at all and he's, you know, making a ton of noise or preventing, you know, he's he's blown opportunities for you. That's that's a difference. You know, that's the kind of thing where, you know, make it a point to when you go on a hunt, don't be afraid to after, you know, give yourself a day, two days and go to the person that's in charge and be able to say, you know, hey, um, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time. I would have a way better time if a few, few little things could, could change, you know, whether it's, I'm not sleeping good in my cabin. The guy that I'm with is just snoring so hard. I can't sleep at all. Or, um, you know, me and my guy just, you know, every day he's taking three hour naps and I'm really wanting to at least be somewhere where I can be glassing a field. If he really has to nap, you know, small things like that. If you're able to communicate, it's gonna prevent you from going home upset about it. And I know that Dusty's dad, Bert, was always really good about, um, you know, people would come and, and have a complaint. And sometimes the complaint wasn't valid and he could at least tell them flat out, you know, hey, um, you know, you need to trust us on this. It's gonna happen, you're gonna be fine. Uh, but then also there were times where he said, okay, thanks for letting me know. And he could go to his guide, he could address it. He could change up, you know, sometimes you might say, hey, you know what, uh, Dusty's not really getting along too good with his guy. This other guy is not really, let's just do a switch, flip you guys around, see if that works out better for everybody. Um, but do your research before you go to your 
to your spot where you're hunting, make sure you find that right gear, like Dusty said. A lot of times um, outfitters will have a little pack list. You know, I've I've found that ever since my um, my hunt, I'm just checking out this field, I've been a cinnamon bear in these hills right here. So we're, we haven't seen them, but this here's another tip for you. Don't be afraid to talk to locals and be polite. We, uh, we've got a local farmer that uh, his wife has actually been um, cooking breakfast for the camp. And I've kind of made it a point to get up and get up a little bit early, tell her thank you, help her with dishes, and then say, hey, have you guys um, seen any bears or do you know anyone that might see bears? And they give you the little tips. Like they'll say, yeah, I called Bob down the road and you know, he's been having a bear um, come out in his field with his, you know, cause he's got, he's got all the baby calves out there and they're scavenging. So, you know, little tips like that. Don't be afraid to, uh, to be friends with locals and be polite and it'll open doors for you. I can tell you it always opens more doors than it shuts. If you're courteous to the people, don't drive, if you're driving, you know, if you're getting up to your close camp area for your first time, you got a rental car, don't come riding in like a moron. You come freaking burning around the gravel like Dusty does on his home road. The locals are gonna say, this guy's a dink and they're not gonna help you out. And the other thing too is you never know, some house that you blow by and dust the whole house out, that might be a house where all of a sudden you see a 200 inch mule deer standing out in their field the next day and you need to go knock on the door and ask them permission. Um, so yeah, get your list. Back to what I was talking about, um, since my pack-in trips in Alaska, uh, or float plane trips I should say, well it wasn't really a float plane, it was a super cub, but uh, I learned that, you know, I've ha I had to pack with 50 pounds. I had to in order to fly in. And so I've learned that I can actually do most of the hunting I want to do uh, with 50 pounds in my suitcase. So, like I said, I layer. Um, I really like to have um, a thin UA layer. I'll normally have, um, if it's really hot, I'll have a one, but I really like to have a one and then possibly a four. Um, and a lot of times with whatever my heavier layer is, that's actually what I wear around camps in the evening, um, whether it's moose camp or whether it's here at, at bear camp, I'll actually wear my thicker long johns at night around camp um, instead of having to pack separate, you know, full sweatpants and all that stuff, workout gear or whatever, uh, just kind of utilize a thin little pair of pants and your long johns as part of your layering. Uh, I don't know. What else? Anything else, Dusty, we should add? Um, remember what you're up here for. To enjoy the hunt and have fun. Don't get focused on the kill. It'll come. Just enjoy yourself because that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's a good point. Really good point because uh, if that is your only focus, then what happens is the grumpier you get, well, most people start to be an a-hole. People don't like working for you. No one likes working for an a-hole. <laughs> so don't be an a-hole. You gotta, you gotta just you know know that you know you're up here to have fun, enjoy it. Um, you know, don't be afraid to ask for ask some stories, get some cool tips from the from your guide, get to know him, and uh, you know you may build a friend for life and they'll start working that much harder for you. And then on the last day of the hunt, like today, when you wake them up at 6 a.m. and say, hey dude, I know we never see bears really before 10, but we're going out for four more hours. And look, we saw, how many, five bears today? Yeah, yeah three, yep, saw five bears. And we're literally pulling in right now to camp. Uh, I've got a pack, I've got a, I flew into the wrong airport, so I've got a really long flight or drive to get to the airport. Um, so that's it. But yeah, thanks everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed a little. 
safety, then teamwork. Then teamwork. See you guys.